Welcome one, welcome all to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. I, uh... I know I don't have to tell all y'all. It's Groundhog Day. It is a beautiful tradition where a big chubby rat tells you if you should stop by Burlington Coat Factory. <laughs> this morning, the world's eyes once again turned to Gobbler's Knob. <laughs> Can I say Gobbler's Knob on CBS? <laughs> we'll find out. We'll find out later. Uh, Gobbler's Knob, Pennsylvania, and we learned our fate. Punxsutawney Phil has predicted six more weeks of winter. What? I was gonna wear capri pants tomorrow. <laughs> I'm not taking that. I want a second opinion. Do we really have six more weeks of winter ahead? Tell us, Punxsutawney Phil Collins. <laughs> the science is in. But I don't blame our endless winter on Punxsutawney Phil alone. I also blame his old-time retinue of top-hatted handler dandies. <laughs> now, first, I'm sure you're wondering, why the top hats? Well, that's just a quick and easy fashion hack to jazz up a casual look. But I did a little research into those fellows, and it turns out they are Phil's inner circle, the local group <laughs> that takes care of Phil, plans each big ceremony, and administers Phil's meds. <laughs> Did I read that right? His meds? Phil has meds? I didn't realize Phil was diagnosed with generalized anxiety. I'm, I'm not surprised. A lot of pressure this time of year on Phil. Phil, try half a gummy at bedtime. Hey. And remember, it's okay to not be okay. In addition to all the Dickensian costumes, the members all have individual nicknames. You got the main man, President Tom Dunkel, a.k.a. Shingle Shaker, <laughs> Treasurer Jeff Groob, known as Sky Painter, the lickable David Gelati, <laughs> Thunder Conductor, and my personal favorite bad boy, Butch Filiber, <laughs> known as Iceman. Iceman. I gotta say, Iceman has kind of let himself go since Top Gun. Kind of, uh, kind of a sausage fest, right? Wrong. Because there's also one woman, Marcy Galando, nickname Executive Director. <laughs> what? That's not fair. The woman doesn't get a cool outfit or a nickname. Marcy, that changes today. You will heretofore be known as the Denim Demon. <laughs> the top hat. <laughs> not fair. The top hat is in the mail. The inner circle and their psychic, psychotic dirt hog have been cranking out predictions for over a century, but you can't always trust him. Because since making his first prediction in 1887, Punxsutawney Phil has been right only 39% of the time. 39% is pretty bad. In fact, I bet I can beat it every time with my own prediction, pal. Punxsutawney Quarter. <laughs> okay, Quarty. Oh, Told of de Blasio. <laughs> okay, Quarry. <laughs> Remember? De Blasio dropped the, the right. damn hog and killed it. Yeah. Yep. Okay, Quarter, don't fail me now. The prognosticator of prognosticators, close personal friend of George Washington, says six more weeks of tails. <laughs> of course, uh, Punxsutawney Phil isn't the only science marmot out there. We've also got one right here in New York City Staten Island Chuck. <laughs> yeah. True deal. That's the one that's one Blasio killed. Staten Island Chuck at the Staten Island Zoo. Yes, the Staten Island Zoo, where Chuck is the second most popular resident after meatball with a cigarette. <laughs> Daddy, can we see the meatball? <laughs> Today, uh, Chuck had his own shadow viewing event, and he clapped back at Phil by predicting an early spring. Okay? <laughs> there you go, baby. So, New York, say goodbye to winter and say hello to smelling urine again. That's <laughs> mm. what happens in the spring. That's how you know it's spring. Mmm. Yeah. <laughs> I'm taking Chuck's word over any other tri state area rodent because they announced Chuck's forecast with cutting edge technical precision. Come on out. Oh, 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 o
shadow? Shadow or no shadow? Come on. I don't see a shadow. I don't see a shadow. Do we have a ruling? Who makes that call? Right? Why would we make that call? Who makes that call? Who makes that call? Who makes that call? Who makes that call? Okay. That seems a little uncertain, but that's actually how they do all the meteorology on Staten Island. Hey, everybody, right here. I'm Paul at Gabagool with today's weather. You may want to pack an umbrella or not. Who makes the call? Me? Do I look like a <laughs> cloud to you? <laughs> really? Come on. Do I look like a <laughs> cloud to you? <laughs> Tell you what. Maybe, maybe I should go check the weather with your mother. <laughs> Jager bombs! <laughs> now, I know what you're saying. You're saying Steve. That's got to be the end of you talking about groundhogs for the next year. Aren't there any other big stories to cover? To which I say, yes, there's international groundhog news. <laughs> it's a dark story, I'll warn you. And like all the darker stories, it comes from Canada. <laughs> it turns out Quebec has its own groundhog, the famous Fred La Mamotte. <laughs> it's true, which of course is French for soup du jour. Early this morning, tragedy struck when Fred passed away on Groundhog Day. So it turns out he did see a shadow, but it was just the icy hand of death. <laughs> oh, God. You didn't even know about Fred until I told you about him five seconds ago. <laughs> Obviously, this is a tragic development, but Fred's handlers assure us there was no foul play, saying he was at least 14 years old. That's pretty old for a groundhog. <laughs> so he passed away of old age, or was it murder? <laughs> there you go. He's back, baby. <laughs> Probably old age. <laughs> Canadian groundhog authorities were forced to scramble, and they found the perfect substitute a kid in a groundhog costume. <laughs> Unfortunately, the child did not read the winter room and predicted winter will continue. Boo! <laughs> Boo, Canadian child! Boo, Canadian child forced to be a rodent for our amusement! <laughs> boo! Boo, I say! Let him know. I'm sorry, I have seasonal affective disorder. I... <laughs> Let's send the kid a hat, too. <laughs> the world's groundhogs may not be able to agree on the future, but we do know one thing for sure. Beyonce has announced her Renaissance World Tour. <laughs> yes. Come on. It's true. Yeah. World Tour. The whole world. That includes this theater. It is in the world, <laughs> so it's got to be part of the tour. So I don't think I'm out over my skis here. I doubt I'll get in trouble if I announce Beyonce is coming to The Late Show. <laughs> one assumes. That's a safe assumption. <laughs> Take that to the bank. The tour is massive. A 41-show global trek that will launch in Stockholm on May 10th. Sweden is so hyped to be the first date on the tour. In fact, we've got a statement from their ambassador. We woke up in the kitchen saying, how the hell did this happen? Oh, <laughs> He's got pipes. One place Beyonce may or not be appearing is Washington, D.C., where there are some big changes in the House of Representatives led by new Republican Speaker Kevin McCarthy. Seen here... <laughs> seen here playing with a kitten. <laughs> Boo! <laughs> Just take a recent speech on the floor of the House given by Colorado Congresswoman Laura Boebert. This week, someone suggested... A little late, a little late on that one. <laughs> this week, someone suggested some kind of limit on some kind of gun, and Boebert responded thusly. Alcohol, tobacco, and firearms. In Western Colorado, we call that a fun weekend. Don't get so full of yourself, Western Colorado. In Florida, they call that the food pyramid. <laughs> <laughs> Western wow. Colorado. Western Colorado. <laughs> you mean Eastern Utah? <laughs> Speaking of food smells, there's a story out of New Mexico where they're considering making the roasted chili its official state aroma. 
It's funny, I assume the official New Mexico aroma was abandoned RV that a bobcat is living in. <laughs> the idea for an official state aroma came after a state senator visited with fifth grade students and sparked a conversation about these savory hot peppers and the potential for New Mexico to become the first state in the nation to have an official state aroma. Little known fact, all of New Mexico state symbols are picked by fifth graders. <laughs> Explains why they also have a state dork, Kevin. State dinner, fun dip, and of course their state word, boobs. <laughs> but other states cannot let New Mexico be the only one with an official aroma. So here at The Late Show, we have come up with suggestions of official state smells in the order of nothing. Wisconsin, Aaron Rodgers beard. <laughs> Pennsylvania, sock full of coins. Arizona, iced tea. Maine, sewer clown. Kansas, corn. Iowa, corn. Indiana, corn. North Dakota, dust. South Dakota, south dust. Oregon, wet hippie. And New York, the most beautiful audience in the world. We've got a great show for you tonight. My guests are Connie Britton and Formula One driver Daniel Ricardo. But when we come back, 